Welcome to Redefining Balance for Working Moms podcast, where we believe life balance is possible. Uh, Yes, even for you. You might just have to redefine what it looks like for yourself. I'm your host, fellow working mom and founder of Your Life Rocks, Jenny Stemmerman. Each week, I'll bring you practical, real-life tips to help you focus on the things that matter most in life and be the best version of yourself in every area that God has called you to. Ready to redefine what balance looks like for you in your life? Let's go. Hey there, welcome to the show and welcome to the new year, 2020 already, which blows my mind. It always seemed like when you're growing up, like anything in the 20s, 2020 seemed like it was forever away and here we are. (laughs) It is now exactly right where we are. Now, if in this new year, you already have some solid goals, you have a word for the year, you have some strong intentions, this is a great episode for you. If you don't yet have that, if you feel like you're still waiting for God to show you what your word for the year is, or you're just not quite too sure what your goals should be, I highly encourage that you go back and listen to last week's episode where we talked about a different way of setting goals than maybe you've done in the past. And I think that it will really help you out and giving you some clarity and just some focus on what it is that you want to be doing for yourself in all areas of life in this new year. Now, based off of the feedback we had in our Facebook community, I am guessing that you probably have a word for the year or at least some goals and intentions that you already have set for yourself. I posed the question just a couple days ago on what everyone's word was for the new year, and there were a ton of comments and a lot of really amazing words. And some people, just like me, have a word for the year that they would not have chosen for themselves, but they feel like God chose it for them, and so we are living by obedience and seeing what God is going to do. And this is where, you know, you just have to kind of have faith and trust that God has you, and he's not going to do anything that's going to be hurtful or painful or anything like that. I mean, it may be painful at times. We'll see what happens. My word this year is discipline. So you can imagine I'm a little nervous about what that could bring, but I trust God and I know he's got me in the palm of his hand. All right, ladies. So let's get into the topic at hand today. Three things you can do to ensure that you're going to stay true to the intentions that you set for yourself for the new year. Now, number one is something that I recently did a YouTube video on, which if you don't follow me over on YouTube, I hope that you go over and subscribe. I will link to it down below, so make it nice and easy for you to do that. But I did a video last week about how you can really live into your word by focusing on one day at a time. As we were closing out 2019, I felt like God was really pressing on my heart that he had enough grace for my day. That's all I needed to worry about. I didn't need to worry about a week from now, the next day, a year from now, five years from now, just today. And make sure I have provision for today, make sure I have the energy for today, I'm doing the things that need to be done today. And I kind of kept that theme going forward into the new year as I'm doing my morning routine. And I'm really just spending some time each and every single morning when I'm in my time of prayer and reflection and reading the Bible and just thinking like, what are the things that I need to do today to live into my word that God gave me for this year? Now in the Life Balance membership in the last week or so, we've been going through a new year reset and really seeking God for that word and then seeing what that would look like in all of the different areas of our life and really setting goals in that way. Now you can still access that course and get all of the materials inside of Life Balance Membership. You can upgrade inside the Your Life Rocks app or go to lifebalancemembership.com to learn more about it. But when I went through this process of really accepting the word that God had for me and then looking at the different areas of my life, I knew it was going to mean so much in all of the different areas. I knew that my word, again, is discipline, so I knew what that would look like for my health and for my career and for home and for parenting and marriage and all of the things that we talk about here at Your Life Rocks. And honestly, I started getting a little overwhelmed by it, and then I realized, wait a minute, I have the life balance system. I can plug that into my life balance system. And so depending on the week that I'm in and what I'm focused on as I'm following the system, each day will be different. And the way that I am approaching that word and I'm approaching the day and really seeking God and what he would have me do in that particular day. So like I said, I've added this 
practice into my morning routine. Inside the Life Balance membership on the member side of the app, we have a morning routine habit creator. So it's like a little tool that you can put in all of your tasks and what time you wanna do them. And so I've added it in there to keep it as a reminder to me to keep this up. Because the last few days that I've been doing this, it's been really powerful for me and helped me really stay focused in the word and focused on what God would want me to do in that particular day. And it's been really powerful. I just write it right into my planner. And so then that way I know like these are the three things that I need to be focused on today in order to live into the new year in the way that God would want me to. So that's number one is to decide each day how you're going to live out your word of the year for that particular day. All right. Number two is to really look at your goals and decide what is a goal and what is a lifestyle change. Now, if you've listened to the podcast for a while, we've talked about this on a number of different occasions on the difference of a lifestyle change versus a goal. And oftentimes at the beginning of the year, when we're talking about setting goals, the quote unquote New Year's resolution is typically a lifestyle change. Now, while we do talk about setting goals in all eight areas of life, we always say you cannot do more than one lifestyle change at a time. It's just too chaotic. It's too crazy. And it requires a lot of energy to do something that is a lifestyle change. It requires almost all of the other areas of your life to be formatted and adjusted in order for you to be able to support that lifestyle change. Because when we're talking about lifestyle change, Usually we're talking about new habits, new routines. Um, It sometimes impacts our social life or our physical environment, our mental health, like all of these things kind of come into play into making a lifestyle change successful. So it's important that as you are going into this new year, if you are a high achiever, you probably have some intentions set that look more like lifestyle changes in more than one area. So if you want to get your finances in order, you want to lose weight, you want to uh, do some changes in your career, or maybe buy a house or do something different with your kids, like these are all things that are lifestyle changes and not like a small progress step forward. And if that's you and you're like, oh, that's totally where I'm at right now, I would just challenge you to look at those goals that you've set for yourself, those intentions that you've set for yourself, and just identify which one is the biggest priority for me to focus on right now. Like if I had to drop everything but one, what would it be? And let that be your main focus for right now. Now, obviously you're still setting goals in the other areas of your life, but it's not setting those goals in those other areas of your life that are going to then compete with the bigger, most priority lifestyle change that you want to have for yourself. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say your lifestyle goal was to really rein in your finances, like really stick to a budget, pay off some debt, like really get some strong financial movement in your life in the new year. Well, maybe you also want to lose like 30 pounds, right? Well, in order to lose 30 pounds, most likely you're going to probably need to spend a little bit more on your budget or at least reallocate funds in a different way for some healthy food. Maybe join a gym, which is an extra expense, or join a program, which is an extra expense, or hire a health coach, which is an extra expense. So now you have a goal that's gonna require you to spend a little bit more money to get to where you wanna go, most likely. And you have a competing goal that's all about saving more money and controlling your money more. Now, can you do both at the same time? Absolutely, but they are gonna be in a bit of a conflict, and so you're gonna have to make some extra compromises there. And as you begin to lose weight, you'll need to buy more clothes. Like it, you can kind of see how they don't always fit in together. And the same thing can go if you're focused in on your marriage, if you're focused in on buying a new house or changing your career. These are all things that not only compete with each other at times, but compete for your attention and compete with your energy. And we all know as a working mom, that is a rare resource that we need to protect. And so really focus in on what is those main priorities that you want to have, and then let all of the other areas of your life have small goals that help support that. In fact, I just did a podcast on this for our Life Balance Membership exclusive podcast that we do 
where I really kind of break it down into how you can format those other goals in the other areas of your life to help support that bigger lifestyle change goal that you have in order to help you be even more successful. So if you are a Life Balance member, you can check out our Life Balance member exclusive podcast by going into the app, going to courses, and you'll see it right there. All right, so we've covered number one and we've covered number two. Now let's hit in on number three. Now, this particular topic I think is something that is really easy for us to gloss over. It's really easy for us to kind of know in our heads, but then not actually walk it out and take action in it, which is really just staying close to God in your goals. And I have to say, I've even see that, seen this in our Facebook community, even though we're all Christians in there and we are all spending time in the word, it's so easy for us to pick our own word or to pick our own goals and to start thinking about all the things that we need to do in order to accomplish those goals. And rarely do we just pause and ask God what he would have us do, what his goals for our life would be and how he wants to use us. And that's only part of the equation because then once you have that, then it's staying in that constant contact. So going back to step number one, when I said deciding each morning how you're going to live out your word, it's really almost even asking God, like, how do you want me to live this out each day and live in an obedience to him and what he would have you do? Now, sometimes you might feel like he's being completely silent, which trust me is super frustrating, but that's where you have to know what you you have to just kind of do what you know to be best and see how it plays out. See if, if he course corrects you, if there's confirmation from other believers or in scripture that reinforces what it is that you're doing. Because if it's not the right thing to do, it'll be corrected. <laughs> and even, you know, God works all things together for good. So regardless of what you're doing, if you're seeking him, if you are trying to be in his will, if you are trying to stay close with him and, and asking him what it is that he would have you do, he's going to bless that. He's going to bless that. So you just want to make sure that you're not leaving him completely out of it. If you are someone who did pick your own word versus seeking God and what word he would have for you, or you just totally forgot to pray about your goals and just said, this is what I want. And that's the goals I'm setting for myself. It's not too late. It's not too late to just pray and speak bring it all before God and see what he would have you do. And even the goals, if you feel like this is a goal that God has given me, make sure you're always holding it loosely in your hand because we always need to be ready to pivot and follow the spirit in any direction that he would have us go. So let me recap these three things for you to help you really bring that intention, the goals that you've set for the new year into life and make it a little easier for you and just kind of give you an action plan, a game plan in order for you to be successful. Number one is to decide each morning how you're going to live out your word for the day. Make it part of your morning routine and make that plan happen. Number two, look at your goals and make sure you don't have any more than one lifestyle change on your goals that you have for the new year. And kind of to piggyback on that a little bit, make sure you have goals set for all of your areas of life. It'll help keep you balanced for sure. And then number three, don't forget to keep God in the loop with the goals and all of the things that you are doing and be quiet every once in a while and just listen to him and see if he would have you go in the same direction, a different direction, or what he would have you do. I hope that these three tips really help you to make a plan, move things forward, and I hope it encourages you to be able to know that there are some things that you can do to ensure that you reach the goals and intentions that you've set for yourself. You know, so often we set these goals and intention and then we don't always follow through with it. And what happens is when we do that over and over and over again, we can start to doubt ourselves. We can start to think like, Am I ever going to follow through on this? Why even bother setting a goal? Why even bother doing these things that I, I saying that I do? Every year I buy a planner and then by March I'm not using it anymore. Every year I say I'm going to lose the same 15 pounds and then I don't. And this is why that third step I think is so critical to bring God into it because the things that we can't do in our own power, we can do through his power and he's always renewing us. He's always giving us renewed strength, renewed grace, and through him, we can do hard things like stick to our goals. Now, obviously, if he's telling you to go in a different direction, go in the different direction. Follow him. That's not giving up on your goals. That's following the Lord. 
Now, I know in this podcast, we mentioned all kinds of different resources from our YouTube channel to the Life Balance Planner to Life Balance Membership and Exclusive Member Podcasts and so many more things. I invite you to check out yourliferocks.com to learn more about everything that we're doing here to help support working Christian moms. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at jenny at yourliferocks.com. I would love to hear from you. Now, next week, we are going to be back with a special guest talking about what it really was like for her and her lifestyle change to lose 60 pounds. She talks a lot about like what it took, and it's not just like what she ate and what she did for her workouts. There's so much more to it, which I think will drive home this whole idea of a lifestyle change versus a goal so much more. I know she's going to inspire you, give you some great tips. And get you really motivated, even if weight loss is not something that you have as a a goal or a lifestyle change that you want to achieve, the things that we're talking about in that particular episode apply to so many more things. So that's coming up next week. I hope that you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And until then, keep building a life that rocks. Bye. Hey, just because the episode's over doesn't mean we have to stop hanging out head on over to Instagram and follow me there. You can find me at your.life.rocks. Or if you're more of a Facebook kind of girl, join our community of working Christian moms just like you. You can search Your Life Rocks over on Facebook and connect with us there. And if you're ready to truly create lasting balance and get results in your life, maybe it's time for you to join Life Balance Membership. Download the Your Life Rocks app in iTunes or in Google Play. You can upgrade to the membership right inside the app. And if you're looking for more resources to help you create more balance, head on over to yourliferocks.com.